Okay, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to be short, but uh, the problem with this group was that this was dealing with a topic which was, which is, I would say, utterly ignored in, in river science. Uh, so, you know, I was asked to, to include a few slides which are, which would highlight the importance and the, and the basics of that, but I'll very quickly skip through that. Uh, river form is something uh, which is not considered in any river management strategy as of today. Uh, so therefore, it is very important that we highlight the importance of these, uh, you know, and, and, and then and see what are the concerns. Uh, we, we, we have to literally start from the very basics. What is a river form? And, you know, as most of you might know, that it's expressed in three forms, plan form, cross-sectional form, and longitudinal form. The implication why it is important to consider the form is because it influences hugely the hydrology and sediment transport. And then, of course, it basically provides the habitat for aquatic life, and therefore it has a huge ecological significance. There were many, there are many concerns which, you know, which members expressed that river has, river has an ecosystem, and therefore any change in the form must, you know, will eventually alter that. It supports a biodiversity, you know, and therefore any impact on form due to interventions is not properly assessed. And, and, the, and, and then what is, what is important to realize is that any sharp change in the form which is particularly what happens when you have an intervention, ultimately uh, you know, affects the, the process in a very major way. So therefore, the other issue which is very connected to river form is geomorphic connectivity. Yesterday, it was pointed out, and I will not repeat that, we expressed that in terms of longitudinal, vertical, and lateral connectivity, and this is again related to the form as well, and, and the processes. I'll, I'll skip this slide, you know. Okay, now why it is important to assess the river form is because you know, river form helps you to understand and define the geomorphic condition of a river, okay? And therefore, whether any river structure is appropriate for performing the river functions. You know, we have been talking about river functions since yesterday. We defined the geological, ecological, and, you know, hydrological functions and all that stuff, you know, yesterday itself. So therefore, river form has very strong link in terms of the river health. And this is exactly why we are talking about the river form today. And any assessment of river form must be process-based. It must be framed in the type of the river you're dealing with. And then, of course, it must also take into account that rivers are dynamic. So therefore, the dynamics, the morphodynamics of the system must also be taken into account when you are assessing the river form. So the other concept which I was trying to highlight is that, you know, the river form also defines the river space. You know, the, the active channel belt plus the active floodplain uh, basically mark, you know, we are, we are trying to, to advance this concept as a part of the uh, consortium project as well, is that this space must belong to the river and that must be left to the river. And, and that space includes, as I said before, uh, the complete floodplain, which was discussed by Dr. Mishra a while ago, for example. The problem is that this is uh, also an area which is very supportive of the habitat and including the human beings, and, and, but then also very frequently occupied by the local people as well. So our target has been or should be to map this area as accurately as possible, to delineate the channel part and the river form and the floodplain together and designate the river, river space as, as accurately as possible. And that is what we are trying to do, essentially. These are some of the methods which we normally use. Again, I don't have time to get into the details of that, but we delineate, there are standard methods now available to delineate that river space and then designate that to the river, for example. Okay, now this is what came up during the discussion that some of the major interventions which are happening and which are changing the river form, they are all, every, everything is known to all of you, so I will not repeat that. Dams, barrages, abstractions, bridges, embankments, road, culvert, sand mining is again a very important issue. Channelization of the river and floodplain encroachment. The role of vegetation needs to be understood. The catchment scale interventions needs to be understood as well. And then, of course, the discharges into the rivers from the tributaries and other sources also have to be assessed, for example. These are some examples I included from my own collection of slides, which are bad uh, river forms uh, and good river forms and so on. Uh, you know, how do you lose the connectivity between the system? How do you assess the uh, geomorphic condition of a river and so on? Uh, this is a slide which I included as a request of one of my members that we should have some sort of a checklist of, uh, for the assessment of the strategic environmental assessment of, and these are all the geomorphic parameters one should have you know, in hand or, or some knowledge of that before you start compiling the information on the geomorphic assessment of the, of the river systems. So the three or four major recommendations which came out of the group was first that 
the impact on river form must be assessed for the river project, which is not normally done as on today. And all interventions, you know, which I listed a while ago, must you know, make sure that uh, they do not change the natural form of river, for example. And that includes the channel and floodplain relationship as well. The historical variability of the system, because as I said, river is a dynamic agent. It's moving from one place to the other through time. That must be taken into account. We cannot you know, fix the river anyway. And including that and including the flood frequency and other, other parameters, you must designate the river space. And that space must be left to the river, for example. And I would like to finish by this slide by saying that there was a lot of debate as to why, uh, that, why should we maintain the form at all and what, what form or, or to what extent the river form must be maintained. My submission to this group is that it is very important to understand that even naturally the river changes its form. So we must take that into account. Second, that it is possible that river has attained a state from where it is almost impossible to bring it to the pristine state. I made that point yesterday as well. And therefore, but what is important from a river point, river form point of view is that river, the fundamental point is that the river must look like a river. Okay? So therefore, uh, as much as possible close to a natural condition. And therefore, we must have, we, ha we actually have the techniques and technology and, and, and methods to assess the impact of the river. It depends where you are on that line from intact to degraded, you know, where you are. You may be at a turning point where you can literally restore the condition to a natural condition, almost pristine, but you may be at a turning point where you may not be able to do that, and that's where you need to understand that you must create a condition which is natural, which is not pristine, but as close as possible to the natural condition. And that is the fundamental point I wanted to make, with, make, make to this group, and, and that's where I finish now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, questions, comments? I'm from the same group. And, uh, we raised this question not just of form, but also full content, including the flow, which is extremely important. And uh, we basically destroy the river if we look at the form as a flat thing and uh, don't understand the uh, <coughs> damage we are doing if we divert flows to very large extents. Uh, it, I have pointed out in this group that uh, in the Himalayan region, there is high porosity of the soil and uh, barrages are not working. Uh, sorry, the, <coughs> uh, uh, the dams which have their reservoirs uh, are not working because the reservoirs are emptying out but far too fast and uh, some of them uh, do not come to the expectation, but they are ignored because new dams are being proposed because money is available and uh, ministers can be bribed so, <clears throat> to get them. So uh, I feel that this is a very, very important point because we are going to destroy our rivers, destroy our e ecology, and we will have a very serious situation at, in our hands unless we, uh, unless we pay, pay attention to this. So I feel, I put down, uh, I suggested that in the Himalayan regions we should have no dam projects whatsoever because of the high porosity of the soil. And I think this matter should be taken up in, the, in our final report because uh, if you don't do that, then we are destroying uh, uh, that area, that con our, a large part of our country. Any other uh, comments, questions? So uh, just I'm uh, restricting myself to the last uh, point raised by this gentleman about uh, projects in Himalayas. I'm from power sector, and uh, I understand all the projects that are being planned there for dams or for hydroelectric projects. I agree with him that there is, a, there is a need for us to raise a fundamental issue. Why do we need a hydroelectric project in sensitive areas for electricity generation alone, unless it's a multipurpose project? And uh, uh, there is an uh, enormous amount of data to suggest that we don't require any additional hydroelectric projects in the whole country in order to sustain quality supply to all sections of the society of electricity. I think that's a very important one. Uh, if you can take it up as a final uh, resolution as a part of this, that, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, 
So I have to thank you for bringing in geomorphology of a river because it's something that from an outsider point of view it's, it's often missed here. Although I have to say that uh, still, again, from an outsider point of view, the stress on engineering and even scientificism at time is still felt a lot in India. So I wonder, for example, the lady who was raised a point before was an historian, but I wonder how many historians, I'm not one, but how many historians are here and can contribute to say, is, is a river, has a river ever been natural? I don't know. I mean, and, and, and the question is that, for example, now in the US, there is this one of the most thriving business apart from harms and, and, and pharmaceuticals, is the restoration of a river. And it's not the restoration to some ideal state of, of, of a time. It's the restoration that takes in account the human intervention in a river. But the question there, which is still not addressed, in, I, I, I think in the US is not addressed enough, and, and that's for power reasons that we know, it's something that we could address here. And is actually whose right have to be considered um, so that I would hope that you can we can we can came up with with some statement which has a for, form of inclusive inclusiveness which doesn't take in account only uh, Hindu wisdom for example but it's uh, uh, much more inclusive of you know different kind of parts of, of, of people who live around the river on the river and that are the ones which are, which are obviously voiceless and we can't uh, you know, express much. And I don't think neither an engineering perspective nor a scientific perspective can take that in mind. I don't know how much local wisdom can actually be taught in colleges, but I think that a form of, of equity statement should be addressed a little, okay. a little more. Thank you very much. I think uh, interest and time has run out for this group discussion. 